track, meet with head cut. Uma decisão importantíssima para os dois lados. Quem vencer vai para o Mundial de Clubes. Dois times que se conhecem muito. Qual é a chave para ganhar hoje e ser campeão? Boa noite, boa noite a todos que estão nos assistindo. Cara, a chave é a gente fazer aquilo que a gente faz todos os dias. Com a maior intensidade possível, da melhor, da forma mais bem feita possível, com desprendimento, com atitude. Eu falo sempre que a, a, a final, ela vem depois de você fazer vários treinos, vários jogos, aquilo que você trabalha todos os dias. Então que a gente possa colocar em prática tudo que a gente faz todos os dias, da melhor forma possível. Até que ponto jogar em casa faz a né, Franca ainda mais favorito, né, o time que chega invicto na decisão? Cara, jogar, jogar com o apoio da nossa torcida, com o Pedro Acão lotado, sempre é muito bom. A gente tem um, a, um recorde né, melhor de vitórias dentro de casa do que fora. E isso nos motiva, nos dá confiança. E a gente, naturalmente, a gente dando numa pegada como a gente tem certeza que nós estamos, a torcida vem junto com a gente. Obrigado, Elinho. Boa sorte, bom jogo. Gustavo, Flamengo e Franca vem protagonizando várias finais nos últimos anos. É, Flamengo consegue encontrar alguma carta na manga para surpreender um time que está invicto a 45 jogos e ser campeão? Bom, os dois times se conhecem muito. Ah, já são vários jogos em sequência pelo NBB, pela Copa Super 8. Mas sempre tem muita coisa para corrigir do que a gente já fez contra eles, que deu certo. Não fazer mais do que não deu certo e sempre tem que ter alguma novidade. Principalmente para um jogo tão decisivo como esse, tem que ter alguma novidade para tentar surpreender. Obrigado, Gustavo.
Good evening and welcome into the championship game of the 2023 Basketball Champions League Americas Tournament. Alongside Carlin Gay, I'm Craig Beta, and we're so glad you can be with us wherever you're tuned in from around the world. The venue is Ginacio Pedrojao in Franca, Brazil, and Carlin Franca was awfully impressive on their home floor in the semifinal win over Kimsa with their two-headed monster of Luca Diaz and Luca Mariano. They combined for 38 points and 19 rebounds. And between the two of them, they were also five for six from three-point range. Yeah, dominant combination. When you have bigs that can play both inside and outside, it just presents a huge issue for any of the opponents. That's part of the reason why we see this home team, Franca, being able to play for it all at home. Flamengo, meanwhile, had a tough battle against Minas. Their outside shot was not falling, going just 8 of 30 from beyond the arc. But they took great care of the ball, and that's something they'll need to do tonight if they're going to end Franca's 45-game overall win streak. 368 kilometers, 229 miles, separate Franca and Belo Horizonte on the map. And 40 minutes separate one of these teams from championship glory. Flamengo hoisted the trophy in Managua in 2021. Franca has gone farther this year in this tournament than they have before. They made it to the quarters in 20 and 21. They are looking to hoist the trophy here tonight. There you get a look at Franca head coach Helio Rubens in their home arena. The coach for Flamengo is Gustavo Conti, our officials for tonight's game. Roberto Vasquez of Puerto Rico, Julio Anaya of Panama, and Juan Fernandez of Argentina. Just an incredible environment here in Franca. Fans were into it all pregame, and no doubt they are going to be making noise all night long, especially if Franca gets rolling. Just moments away from tip-off. Same starting lineup for both of these two teams as in the semifinal wins yesterday. We are underway. Yes. Philippe Paula and now David Jackson and a whistle. And already, the excitement, the tension, the buildup. Players already kind of getting in each other's faces a little bit. You like it from the visitors from Flamingo. They don't want to feel like they're being intimidated by this sold out crowd here. 7,500 packed into this arena. Shot short by Diaz. Rebound Hetchemeyer. On the floor for Flamengo, Ricardo Fisher, Nicolas Aguirre, Gabriel Galvanini, Rafael Hetchemeyer, and Martin Cuello. Jackson high off the glass, and it falls. For Franca, it's Jonathan Dos Santos, Luca Diaz, Jorginho De Paula, Luca Mariano, and David Jackson. Only 2 0 lead for Franca. Another rebound by Galvanini. Galvanini had a whale of a game yesterday in the semis. 14 points, 8 rebounds. Huge second half for Galvanini. Now the feed inside to Luca Diaz, and he lays it in off the glass with the right hand. And Franco with an early 4-0 lead. Diaz started fast in the semifinal game, found himself in some foul trouble, but he came alive to close the show. If he stays out of foul trouble, he can consistently put the ball in the basket. And again, that two-headed monster, so dangerous for Franco. Cuello with six on the shot clock. Skip pass into the corner. Now back up top. Fisher for three. No good. Rebound back tap. Controlled. And up with the left hand is Hetchemeyer. He lays it in for the first two points for Flamengo. 
clearing the backboard, clearing the rebounds for both teams is going to be so important. Don't want to give too many opportunities at the goal on either side. Here's Jackson back outside to Dos Santos for three. That's good! Shot blocked, but a foul called. They're going to get Paula on the foul. see much of in the way of contact there but your Fisher that's what you want to do you want to attack the rim try to get Franca in some foul trouble so they go into their bench now this is a deep team right like they have bodies that could come off the bench and contribute but the two best wing defenders on the floor in Jonathan and Jorginho they did a terrific job of slowing down Brandon Robinson yesterday where the top scorers in the BCLA if you can get them in foul trouble, get them off the floor, you hope at least that your offense has an easier time of getting in its rhythm. Jackson high right side around the screen by Mariano. He gets it back out to the big man. He launches the trade. That's good! It's two games in a row now. I don't know if either team has watched tape of Lucas Mariano, but he's going to be able to knock down that shot. Forget about the percentages. Don't play that. Play the man. He's going to be able to knock down open threes. Now the answer at the other end is up and good. Joaquin Cuello. That three-pointer is up and in. That was Jorginho. And this one off to a rollicking start. A little spin move along the baseline for Hesemeyer, and now a foul called. Hesemeyer got away with the walk there and was bailed out on the foul. That but this happened pretty deep under the basket as well. Look at him shuffle those, that pivot right there and drag it. Clear as day. We could have blown the whistle from where we are, but if you're looking at Hesemeyer as he tells the free throw line, it's going to be so important for him to come up on that screen situation on the other end of the floor. We know he doesn't want to do that, right? Like we saw that yesterday against Kimsa. They had some success kind of pulling him, trying to pull him out of the paint. He's not going to be able to do what he did yesterday in terms of drop coverage. He's going to have to come out and challenge the bigs because Franca's bigs in terms of Lucas Diaz, Lucas Mariano, they don't want to roll. They want to pick and pop. And if you give them open threes, they're going to take them and this is one of the best scoring, actually the best scoring team in the competition in terms of Franca. You don't want to give them open looks. So look out for number 30 in white and how he guards the screen and roll. Either of these teams shot the three ball particularly well in the semis. And Storchino swoops in for the dunk. Technical foul. Let's see what happened. Jorginho was a little too enthusiastic after his dunk. Cuello hits the tee. Good job by the officials. There's a lot of emotion in the yeah. arena right now, right? Like, the, the fans are, they're rocking. They are rocking this gym, and the officials just want to make sure that they keep control of this basketball game. We know it's an emotional game. We know what's on the line, right? Like, we, we have to keep control and still keep it a basketball game, especially after we went nose-to-nose -nose the first five seconds of the game. Yep, I'm glad you brought that Officials making up. sure they, yeah, keep things in check. Galvanini cross-court pass to Hesemeyer, back outside to Fisher. Shot clock at five, inside to Hesemeyer. Now the cutting Galvanini, no good. Rebound pulled down by Jackson. Here comes Franco looking to extend this six-point lead. Diaz for three. Rebound Hesemeyer. Five and a half minutes to play, first quarter. A lot of action in the early going. 
Not like a regular heavyweight fight when you see the teams kind of feeling each other and now and out and now a backcourt violation. As Fisher misplayed the pass. Branca, 7 of 10 from the floor in the early going. Make it 8 of 11. David Jackson buries the jumper. And this is a good timeout yeah. by Coach Conti, realizing that momentum slowly slipping away from his team. Two turnovers so far in this game. You don't want this to get out of hand in the first quarter. And it, you kind of want the crowd to, you know, punch themselves out, so to speak. They're, they're kind of boisterous, they're loud, they're excited. They can't keep this up for 40 minutes. You want to tire them out, early timeout. A gente combinou com o lado contrário vai ficar dentro. Como é que ele bate e tá enterrado? Os pivôs, quando a gente tá jogando, quando a gente tá jogando fogo, os pivôs, ele não tá indo bloquear, ele tá abrindo. Então é nada, o pivô fica com o pivô e o lado contrário, se tiver o drive, ajuda, cara. Eles não fizeram uma bola ainda com drive e passe lá, porque a gente não atacou a bola. Nós não atacamos a bola. Ricardo, a hora que ele tá chegando para fazer o back, você tá indo pro lado contrário. Espera, ele tá virado aqui, ele tá virado para lá. O, back, o bloqueio tá vindo aqui, você tá atacando do outro lado. Calma, espera ele encaixar. 17-9 in favor of Franca early in this one. As we look at some of the highlights from the first half of the first quarter. It's been all Franca so far led from the outset. This is their biggest lead of the game at eight points. Fisher, high right side. Leo gets it down to Galvanini and now Andres Barguin checking in for Flamengo. He loses it. And now Diaz, <laughs> how about that? Diaz is saying, no, that went off me. They were going to give the ball to Franca. And in an extraordinary display of sportsmanship, Luca Diaz said, no, that went off me. I don't, know if they hand out, I don't know if they hand out an award for sportsmanship, but he has <laughs> my vote, and he's not, he's not. I'm not taking it away from him at all. That three-pointer misses, and... Rebound Franca. Here's Jorginho into the lane. Outside. Long three on the way. Short. Rebound there for Diaz, though, but he cleans it up with the left hand. That can't happen, Craig. You know they're going to take their threes when they have the opportunity to do it. If you're Flamingo, you have to block out and not give them another opportunity at the basket. That was bad defense overall for Flamingo. Drop pass. Nothing there. And now a three on the way. Luka Diaz. That time he points the other direction and says, should be our ball. And the officials agree with him. Barguin could not track that down. Fans have not uh, shown any interest in letting up so far. Jorginho, the left hand lay in, takes it all the way. And Jorginho de Paula is off to a red hot start. He's got seven points already. And it's a 12 point lead for Franca. Jorginho, shot clock at three. And the fall away hook doesn't fall, but he's going to go to the free throw line for a pair. a much better possession that time for Flamingo and this is one of the areas you, you can never lose a game or you can never win a game in the first quarter but you can definitely lose one and the way that Franco has come out determined with the crowd and the energy 
kind of feeding them. It's up to Flamingo to withstand this emotional wave that's coming their way. And the best way for them to do that, they have to score the basketball so they're able to set their defense. Because if they keep allowing Franca to get into open floor opportunities, it is going to be a quick night. Yeho misses the first free throw. Misses the second as well. Nothing going Flamingo's way here in the early going. And Franca is rolling. Scala running the point now for Franca. David Jackson, a step back jump shot. Did not go, but Luca Diaz the rebound. Mariano now gets it back to Diaz. His fadeaway won't go. And if you're Flamengo, you hope to maybe get it down to six or eight as that three-pointer is going to help. Maybe by the end of the first quarter. As Cuello cuts the deficit to nine. If you can get it down to maybe six points at the end of this first quarter, I think you will have withstood a huge blow by the home team. Here's the drive by Jackson. No. Dosa off the glass. No, but the putback falls in. Nice job on the follow by Andres Ibarguen. His first game with Flamengo was in the semifinals. He scored four points. He had not been with Flamengo until yesterday. Baseline fadeaway, no good by Luca Mariano. Down to seven now. Cuello, that's good! Martin Cuello forgets six or eight. Cuello cuts it to four with that three-pointer with 1.56 to play in the first. And Flamengo, they were dead on their feet there for most of the first quarter. And in the past minute and a half, they have come to life and cut this deficit to four. Gustavo Conti has his team rolling and Elio Rubens. Wants time out. One seventeen in favor of Franca. We look at some of the first quarter highlights. Franca was rolling. They built up a twelve point lead at twenty one nine. An eight zero run though by Flamengo has cut it down to four after the three pointer by Martin Cuello. Long and often we talk about how defense sparks your offense but this time around for Flamingo they saw the ball go through the basket and allowed them to set their defense and make things tougher for Franca on this end of the floor Good bucket there by Luca Diaz but they're making Franca work a little bit more right that wasn't an easy basket that's a big time play by a big time player he's not going to make shots like that all the time though if you continue to show him bodies and make things tough for him that that's not going to be a regular occurrence so you know to score for Flamingo is going to be so important, not only to keep up with them on the score sheet, but allow themselves to get back, set their defense, and make it tougher for Franca. And that's why they dug, they dug back into this game. 
Yes, completes the three-point play to get the lead back to seven, coming up on one and a half minutes to play in this first quarter. Pass outside, that three short, kicks off the front end of the rim, rebound back tap, finally controlled by Marcio Santos. And the Flamengo bench wanted to travel. He slid with the ball. I'm not sure what that was. I don't know why he was shooting that ball from there. Scala, he had two guys on him. He was near the sideline and decided to put a shot up. I'm not sure what he was thinking there. It was a terrible shot, but guess what? Santos picks it up on the offensive rebound. And again, Flamingo, you force a tough shot. You need to finish possession and block out and grab that rebound. Ball was on Vildosa, his first. That three is good. Santiago Scala, a little easier on that one. And just like that, the lead back to 10. 48 seconds to play in this first quarter. Pass tipped by Diaz. Shot clock at seven. Underneath to a Bargwin stolen away. Finds one of the unsportsmen like there. Spin move, left hand layup, gorgeous job. Michael Smith, the veteran, lays it in and he gets the lead back to 12. Fifteen seconds, two seconds difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Vildosa on the ISO. Tries to shake Santos. Gets it to a Bargwin. His shot is no good, but a foul away from the shot. Scala wanting a little bit of explanation there. So Flamengo will get the last shot of the first quarter. Hetschemeyer comes back in. As does Luca Mariano. Inbound from Vildosa. 3.3 on the clock. Let's pass in. Two and one. Fall away three-pointer misses everything. And the first quarter will come to an end. With Franca on top 29-17. This is the 2023 Basketball Champions League America final between Flamengo and Franca. One period of play in the books. Franca on top, Welcome back to Ginacio Pedro Cao in Franca, Brazil. Championship game of the 2023 PCLA playoffs. Final four weekend here in Franca. Just a tremendous venue. We've had three great games so far. And Franca looking to win their first championship. Flamengo won the 2021 edition of this tournament in Managua. 
quarter of play. Franco leading Flango 29-17. Alongside Carlin Gay, my name's Craig Feta. Hope you've been enjoying the final four. Still 30 minutes of basketball to go. Franco opened up a 12-point lead on one occasion in the first quarter. Flamengo cut it back to within four, but then Franco went on a little run there at the end of the first quarter to expand the gap back to 12. Three-pointer no good, rebound tapped, and finally controlled by Franco. Jackson, right side to Mariano. Smith from the right elbow, that's good! In the first quarter, Flamengo shot just 33%, Franca 57% from the floor. High off the glass for the layup, no good, Vildosa. Here comes Franca back the other way. Mariano getting it to Jackson. Ooh, very close. To a backcourt violation. Here's Jackson. Side jumper, no. Rebound pulled down by Vildosa. Long pass up ahead to Galvanini. And he draws the foul. And Great job. Of, prepare free throws. Great job by Galvanini running the floor there, trying to beat his man down. And Vildosa with the heads up play to throw that pass right on the money. And if Flamingo is going to attack the defense, you mentioned the poor shooting so far for Flamingo. If they can get some easy layups in transition, that should definitely help the shooting percentage. But again, you have to see the ball go through the hoop to try and set your defense. It doesn't feel like Flamingo has really got a hole on either stopping the inside or outside game for Franca. They're shooting 50% from three-point range, Franca is in this game. And they're plus 10 in terms of points in the paint. 14 to 4. One has to give, and Flamingo's going to have to make that decision. Otherwise, this is going to be a long night. Galvanini misses both free throws, but therefore the putback is Martinez. He can't get it to go. There's Jackson on the left side. And the whistle away from the ball. And look, Mark, uh, rather, Hersmeyer is lucky that Martinez picked up the foul there because once yeah. again, he lost sight and lost contact with Lucas Mariano. You don't want to do that around the perimeter. We saw what he can do in the semifinal game from range. These bigs for Franca in terms of Diaz and Mariano, they can knock down the triple. You've got to stay attached to them. Scala lobs it inside to Santos. To Golten. Yep. Gustavo Conti wants timeout. Gustavo Conti animated during that timeout. His team trails by 16. 
on the 12-0 run by Franca. And that was a good foul right there by Marcio Santos. We just saw the quick replay on that. He was challenging the layup from behind. It was a hard foul, very easy to get an unsportsmanlike in that play, but it was a hard foul, but he went for the ball and it was clean. It was just hard and he made sure that there was no layup. Pretty move there by Galvanini to go to the left hand off the square. And that ends the 12-0 run. Now a whistle away from the ball as Guy Deodato was tied up with David Jackson. But you see the difference in having your offense have to work against a set D. A lot tougher to get into your stuff when you're playing against a set D, regardless of who's on the other side. Great defense by Galvanini on Mariano. Oh, I'm going to give him the continuation. And that foul is going to be on Santiago Scala. So Fisher. Nice stop and go move. Scala will have a seat on the bench. Deodato. Mm. Oh, ankle breaker and the three-pointer. My goodness. Deodato, he had Mariano on skates. Mariano was playing twister for a second there, touching a bunch of colors on that crossover. Oh, no. There's fouls, and then there's fouls with a capital F. Yeah. That is a foul with a capital F. We've Got his money's worth on that one. Moving screens where <laughs> guys have just gotten absolutely level. The second foul on Marcelo Santos. Got his money's worth out of that one. Aldado has it. Another one of those great veteran Brazilian players. Seen him on the senior national team. Bargwin. And a foul. And he's wanted to, I believe, a double dribble. Love the passion in this arena right now. Not a seat available, young and old. Love to see it. Deodato, 10 on the shot clock. To his left, guarded by Mariano. See if he can do it again. That three-pointer is up. Off right side, rebound into the corner. Save, Deodato's got it. Back outside to Cuello. Nice. Inside, and Ibarguen finally gets a handle on it. Can't get it. Fisher's got it back. No, that was Galvanini back up top to Deodato. Shot clock at nine. Inside, shot blocked by Diaz. Ball's on the floor. Deodato's got it. Shot clock at three. He's got to put it up. That's oh. good! E. Deodato with the shot clock winding down. Oh, my goodness. Not much you could say about that possession, but you stick to it, and it pays off. Tipped pass stolen away by a Bargwin. Find Deodato. Get him the rock. Yeah. He's hit two threes. Let him go to work. Fisher launches the tray. That misses everything. Deodato saves it, but he gives it up to Jorginho now at the other end. Luca Diaz wrecks the rim. That Fisher three should have been a turnover, basically. He should get credited for that because that led to the leak out, led to the fast break opportunity, and Diaz with that crush. Don't want to take bad shots against this team. Cuello with the air ball, and he's saying that it was tipped. I'm not sure if he meant he 
was fouled. His hand got tipped, or the shot was actually tipped. Franco defensively has intimidated Flamingo from going inside by just being physical. Yeah, they have four fouls in this quarter. We understand that, but the physicality sometimes you kind of shy away from, and you're starting to see Flamingo settle for plays on the perimeter rather than go in and invite that contact. Mariano the drive. Count the bucket. Shot clock was winding down. He took it himself. Right down Main Street. Foul on it, Bargwin. Bargwin did everything he could to try to stop Mariano. You ain't gonna stop that man. Here's the difference between Lucas Mariano and Lucas Diaz, and most of the bigs playing professional basketball in the world. They can score both inside, outside. They score at the mid range. They can play with their back to the basket. But the one thing that makes them special is that they never settle for one, three, or one back to the basket move they're going to give you the entire repertoire all night no matter what and we saw right there diaz took a couple of threes previously i'm sorry mariano took a couple of threes previously they didn't fall so he said you know what i'm gonna put my head down i'm gonna get to the basket he did just that and it paid off Flamingo cut it to eight just a few moments ago now deodato the hanger short he leads back to 13 here's franco looking again to extend Outside to Diaz, he loses control. Up ahead to Deodato, he's got to beat Lucas, and he does. Beats Luca Diaz, and he lays it in. What an incredible job of using the angle to cut him off. If he didn't do that, that shot would have been in the 15th row. He did it smartly, cutting off the angle to lay that in. Deodato with eight points. He had 10 last night. Ball movement on the outside. Now they try to zip it in and stolen it away. Here comes Vildosa into the corner. Three on the way. Short. Up into the basket support. And never comes down. Some people watching this say to yourself, all right, Deodato's knocked down a couple of threes. He just had that layup. You want to reward him wide open in the corner. I say Vildosa on the fast break opportunity find Diaz backpedaling you got to know the situation here's a guy that a does not want to get into foul trouble we know what that had you know the the, the problems he had with that in the semi-final make him make a decision rather than bailing him out and kicking it to the corner for that three Mariano working on Cuello and that goes in Back to 13, Mariano's got eight. It's 11 points in this second quarter for Franca. But just 10 for Flamengo. Tough shot there by DePaula. Finally, Flamengo pulls it off the floor. Coming up on three minutes to play, second quarter. Yo, thought about the three. Now Fisher, no good. I beg your pardon, that was Vildosa on the miss. Flamengo has already taken 19 three-point shots. They've only connected on five. That leads to the easy bucket at the other end for Michael Smith. Smith now with six. Diaz and Hetschemeyer battling under the basket and Diaz going to get called for the foul. Kind of agree with Diaz in that situation. He was just backing up and letting yeah. him fight for the position. <laughs> I don't know what, what more he can do. I mean, he still has to try and prevent his player from getting the rock and we saw a lot more contact on other plays that went unnoticed. So I believe Flamingo a little fortunate after that whistle, especially now that they go to the line, clock stopped, and they can chip away at this deficit. Etchemeyer hits the first free throw. A couple of times, Craig, we've seen some of the guards 
for Flamingo get switched defensively on to by by Mariano and, and Diaz and they've settled for threes and again you, you want to put pressure on those bigs we saw what Deodato could do having Mariano's knees buckle with the crossover if you're able to kind of dance with them take them to the rim force them to get into foul trouble get them off the floor that changes the entire perspective of what this game could very well be but if you let the two-headed monster cook which they're cooking right now that's the reason why you're in this hole Mariano little floater oh my goodness what beautiful touch by the big man you don't expect them to have that touch you don't no. expect them to have that quickness but never judge a book by its cover. There's not many bigs on earth that have that kind of touch from that range. Smith getting it to Luca Diaz. And the 45 to play second quarter. Diaz. And a foul by Muniejo. Carlin, I, I like when you had your hair like Luca Diaz like that. <laughs> they do say that blondes have more fun. <laughs> Lucas Diaz proven that so far in this Final Four. It's a good look for you, though. Diaz works his way in with the easy bucket. And that's the biggest lead of the game for Franca at 17 points. Shot clock at 10. Pinheiro. We got Luca Diaz on the foul. It never fails. It, Dos Santos didn't get called for that foul. But it never fails when a guy gets called for a foul in that situation. He always holds his arms straight up like, I was going straight up. <laughs> and nine times out of ten, his arms were at about a 45 or 30 degree angle. When you see the replay. And, you know, it's the first free throw. Coach Conti, see the look on his face. He's been in two of these finals previously. He's not going to get scared under the pressure of the bright lights of a championship game here at the BCLA, but he's now going deep into his bench, pulling out the captain, Carlos Olivina, and two years ago, when Flamingo won the championship, you wondered if Olivina would play another game. He's here two years later with another opportunity closing in on age 40 to hoist another trophy above his head. But coming into a game like this shows you that you need players who have been in situations like this before and you just need a spark. You need something that can get you going into the halftime locker room. Is the 40-year-old going to give you a bucket? Is he going to take a charge? Is he going to make a play on the offensive end that can kind of get you feeling good about yourselves as you head into the halftime locker room? I like this up. Well, free throws good. Lead back to 17. Carlos Lovina, he'll be 40 years old on Tuesday. Did not play in the semifinal game, resting those old bones. Tough shot oh. there. Oh, my goodness. Pinheiro. See? Holds his hand straight up. <laughs> it's the universal sign for I didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> when that whistle goes... Not much you could say. I mean, now, in this time, case, I think he had a case. He did have his hand straight up. He was straight up. But the angle that Monero took forced the contact, and the refs had no choice but to blow the whistle. But it looks like we might get a challenge. Bronco calls timeout. 48-31. Forty-eight, thirty-three, ending 
free throw. In the bucket by Diego. Balanced scoring for Franca. Eight players have scored. Two-headed monster, both in double figures for scoring. Luca Mariano, 10 points. Luca Diaz, 11. Dino has seven. Michael Smith has six. NTL goes Scala, five. David Jackson, four. Look at the dunk by Luca Diaz. I don't know that I've ever seen anybody start calling for a foul on his way down from a dunk before. We saw that there, and there's that pretty floater from Luca Mariano. The degree of difficulty on that shot is very high anyway, and then usually a big man doesn't have that kind of touch on that kind of shot, but look like he's done a million of those. Can't complete the three-point play, so it's 48-33. Now the steal. Here comes Deodato, goes up and jams it home with two hands. What a way to close out this half, regardless of what happens next. That's a couple of possessions by Flamingo, and you see the captain, Oliveira, cheering on his team. He hasn't contributed yet on the score sheet, but just his presence, calming presence, trying to get momentum as they head to the locker room. 33.5 to play. Flamingo's cut it to 13. Deodato. Clear out. Top guarded by Mariano. E on the drive, kick into the corner. Three on the way by Mignojo. Short, out of bounds, and that's going to be Franca ball. Shot clock will be off, 20.3 on the game clock. No doubt Franca will hold for the last shot. They're taking a lot of threes, even though that one didn't fall. That was one of the best of the night because of the way they got it. Touch the paint. Deodato did not settle for anything. He forced the defense to make a decision, touch the paint, and then kick it out. Giorgio into the front court. Clock at 10. Here comes the help. Screen by Mariano. And Olivia is going to get called for the foul. He was arguing that Jorginho just lost his footing. Let's have a look at it here. Now, there wasn't much contact up top. Their feet did kind of tangle. But I think you have to blow that whistle. No question. He did trip him up. Just even though he didn't mean to. Still happened. Got to blow it. One free throw. Galvanini from just inside. Half court, mm. and that's good! Gabriel Galvanini strikes from just inside the half-court stripe. To cut the lead to 49-38. He may look at this one to see if he got it off. I'm pretty sure he did. The eye test tells me he did. Let's take a look. Oh, yeah. Got it off with plenty of time. Yep. Gabriel Galvanini with the prayer from just inside half court. Gets the lead down to 11 after Franca led by as many as 17 in that second quarter. So a big, big, big prayer answered by Flamengo as the buzzer sounds. It's halftime at the 2023 BCL America's championship game. Bronco leading 49-38. We'll take a little break for halftime and we will look at the numbers 
in just a moment. Alongside Carlin Gay, my name's Craig Fade. I hope you've been enjoying this one. 20 more minutes of basketball yet to be played to determine the Basketball Champions League America's 2023 gold medalist.
Welcome back to Guinocio Pedro Jao in Franca, Brazil for the 2023 Basketball Champions League Americas Final Four. It's the championship game between Franca and Flamengo. Franca on top, 49-38. Let's, let, uh, let's look at some of the numbers on this one for Flamengo. 12 of 36 from the field overall, 33%. They were 6 of 21 from three-point range in that first half, 28.6%. Individually, Martin Cuello, 10 points. Gio uh, Gui Deodato, 10 points. Gabriel Galvanini had five, including that half-court buzzer beater at the end of the first half. Ricardo Fisher had two. Rafael Hetchemeyer, five. Andres Ibarguen had two and five rebounds. And Rafa Minejo, four points. For Franca, 20 of 33 overall from the floor, 60.6%. They took just eight three-point attempts in that first half and hit on four of them. Jorginho de Paula, eight points, three rebounds, three assists. Jonathan Dos Santos, three points, three boards. Luca Mariano, 10 points on four of seven shooting. He also had three rebounds. Santiago Scala, five points. Michael Smith had six. Luca Diaz had 11 on five of 10 shooting. He added five rebounds. David Jackson, four points, two boards, two assists. And Marcio Santos had two points and three rebounds. Fraca out rebounding Flamengo, 23 17. Six turnovers in that first half for Franca, nine for Flamengo. And what we saw yesterday from Franca in the semifinal, they shot poorly as a team, 37.5%. They connected on 30 of 80 shots. Whatever extra they did between the buzzer last night and the tip-off tonight, some extra shots up or whatever, it's worked. No question because about it, and this they, crowd has yeah, definitely helped. The crowd has definitely buoyed them from well before tip-off, in fact. Party atmosphere here in Ginocio you know, Pedro Howe. On the other side, I thought Flamingo closed that half the way that they could and try to feel good about something going into the halftime locker room. You say to yourself, we took a tidal wave of emotion in that first 20 minutes. Let's see if we can ride the wave, sustain it, and chip away at this deficit here in the third. Yeah, twice they were down 17 points. And they managed to get it back to 11. Definitely manageable, no question. And the feed initially denied. Now Jackson has it, shot clock at three. He launches the long three. That's no good. And rebound. Oh, boy. Oh, that's a tough break for Flamengo. And Vildoza has to be 14. way quicker to the basketball than that. It's almost like he was afraid to dive on the floor. This is the championship game. you got to get your chest on the ground and secure that rebound. Side to Jackson, shot clock again at three this time. Deodato comes away with it. Deodato starting the second half on the floor. After his excellent first half, veteran Deodato had 10 points in that first half. It's an important play right there. Lucas Mariano did not have a foul in that first half. Under a minute to play here, or rather under a minute played so far here in this third quarter, Deodato found a way to force him to commit a foul. And again, you stop the clock, you try to chip away at this lead. No better place to do that than the free throw line. And an interesting tactic here by Gustavo Conti. He's only got two starters on the floor to start this second half. 
He's got Galvanini and Cuello out there with Guy Deodato, Rafa Mignejo, and Jose Vildosa. Starters, Nicolas Aguirre, Rafael Hesemeyer, and Ricardo Fisher starting the second half on the bench. So is he sending a message, or is this tactical? We'll see. Outside to Luca Diaz. Three-pointer, yes. Well, right side, three-pointer no good by I believe that was Deodato. And now he commits the foul. Nice little crossover there by Jorginho De Paula. He got the hack. He wanted the shooting foul. He's not going to get it. <laughs> no. Mariano working on Galvanini. And now Galvanini whistled for the foul. Not much Galvanini can do. He's giving no. up a lot of weight to the much bigger Mariano. And if I'm Franca, I go right back to that matchup and try to get Galvanini out of the game. And that's what it looks like they were trying to do. Yep. And another foul against Galvanini. Boy, he had his body at a 45-degree angle almost, leaning against Mariano, trying to keep him from bullying his way down. Listen, he can have an anchor attached <laughs> to his backside. It's not going to matter. He's just not going to be able to stand his ground against the much bigger Mariano. And that's just great offense. Sometimes... Great offense is as simple as, hey, identify the mismatch and let's exploit it. First free throw good. It'll lead back to 13. Second free throw short and then a whistle. Was it a lane violation? Must have been. Flamengo had to be feeling pretty good about themselves just a moment ago. Got it down to nine. But then the three-pointer. Now a foul under the bucket. Did they get Dos Santos or Diaz? on Diaz and Monero has had a struggle at the foul line so far this evening he would love to make these two here two of six now and the Franca fans letting him hear it missed them both offensive rebound by Deodato though Inside to Galvanini, kick out. Three on the way from Vildosa. That rings out. Rebound. Pulled down by Mignero. To Galvanini. He gets it back. Left hand won't go. Pulled off the rim by Diaz. Some good looks there by Flamengo. Did not get one to fall. Jackson, low right side on Vildosa. Outside. Mariano, his three. Misses everything. I want to check on our FIBA cameraman down there, make sure he's okay after that shot. Came out of the air like a missile. Martin Coelho on the defensive end, number 44 in white. Next time you watch him, if Franca goes to the block, he's kind of deciding whether or not he's coming for help or not. He's in no man's land, though. you got to get, either make a decision or, you know, stick to your man. You're just not going to want to give up open threes to Franca. They're lucky that that last one by Mariano ended up being an air ball. It's getting a little restless. They wanted an offensive foul at the other end, and now this foul called. Diaz sits down. He's got four. So 
So mark that down. 7.26 of the third quarter. Luca Diaz goes out with four fouls. Oh, beautiful spin by Galvanini. Gets it to fall in. And it's down to 11. That's great footwork. The pivot stayed down. Mm-hmm. He took contact multiple times and then soft touch to get it over the front rim. Jorginho, way too deep under the bucket. This pass is intercepted by Deodato, and finally, Flamengo corrals it. Cuello works his way into the lane. Little floaters, good, and he's going to go to the line. Cuello, though, goes down hard. He's got 12, and looks to be a little discomfort there on the floor. And give me a second, fellas. <laughs> Let me gather everything. He's asking for the unsportsmanlike. While we sort this out, that's the second foul now on Mariano after he didn't have a single one in the first half. Franca now in the bonus, or in the penalty, rather. So every foul now going to be free throws for Flamingo. This is the exact recipe you want yep. to get back into this game. Make these free throws. Try to quiet this crowd a little bit. You want to junk the game up almost and get the crowd bored. Get the crowd anxious. Sometimes, Craig, when you have a sold-out arena, it can elevate the home team. But if the game is close, it could do the opposite. The anxiety from that crowd could spill onto the court and affect the way that the home team plays. So it works both ways. And Flamingo, if they're able to get a little closer in this game as we get closer to that fourth period, late in the game, keep it within striking distance, maybe that anxiety from potential like, hey, we might lose this game, might creep onto the floor and affect the players. Way with the three-point play, gets it down to eight. 53, 45, six and a half minutes to play in this third quarter. Mariano gets it over to Jackson. Shot clock at eight. Jorginho from the corner. Now inside. Santos, he loses it. Deodato into the front court. Nice. Up ahead to Galvedini. Stolen away by Mariano. Great defense. Running the floor by the big man. And now a foul on Vildosa on the reach in. Boy, Flamengo with a golden opportunity to cut it further. But an extraordinary effort. An extraordinary effort by Luca Mariano. Running the floor and forcing the miss. Jorginho working on Deodato. Tries the kick out pass. And it's a little too far. Goes into the Flamengo bench. So again, Flamengo with a chance to get the lead down to six. Be the closest they've been in a while. Floater off the glass, no, pulled down by Mariano. Comes Franco back the other way, Jorginho. Picked up by Deodato. Deodato picks his pocket. How did he do that? Deodato, left hand, lay it is up and good. Crowd screaming for a foul. I thought that was just good defense. That was sorcery. That wasn't defense. My goodness. And then at the other end, the bucket by Jorginho. Sit back to eight. Deodato again into the corner. Launches the three short. It's a bad shot. Mariano the rebound. And now the foul. And that's a bad foul. And now Galvanini, who the crowd loves to hate, goes chest to chest. Is that with Marcio Santos? 
just not winning basketball there. The bad shot on one end, and then you risk the unsportsmanlike foul on the other end just to slow down the fast break. That's great if you don't if you have fouls to give. Flamingo does not have any fouls to give. And now you see the hack there by Galvanini. And that, that will mean that Virginia will toe the line for two free throws. I know the referees are discussing whether or not there shouldn't be maybe double text or whatever the case is. This is a finals. This is the final game of the BCLA. This is not game one, not game two. This is game 44. Let them play. It's okay to have a little bit of emotion. Let them play. I don't want to see any text either way. I agree with you, but it was completely unnecessary for Marcio Santos to come in like he did after the foul. It wasn't a dirty foul. It wasn't anything too hard about it. And then he just kind of came in and kind of served as an instigator, and that's what our officiating crew is going to look at. Great job tonight, by the way, by our officials in this game. Roberto Vasquez, Julio Anaya, and Juan Fernandez. Well, teams still jawing at each other from their benches. And Rafael Hessemeyer told to get onto his bench. Santiago Scala told the same thing. While we have the time, one of the things that you pointed out Lucas Diaz exited the game with his fourth foul. Since then, the Franco offense it just feels like they're running on fumes right now. The ball is not popping the way it had been. It's a lot of standing around, a lot of one-on-one -on -one play. And that's feeding into what Flamingo wants to do. It makes life a lot easier for them to guard defensively. And that's what has them hanging around. The eight-point lead. You mentioned they were down double digits a couple times in this game. But they're doing what they're supposed to do as a visiting team. Just hang around, hang around, and eventually there's going to be a run. And you just hope that that run lasts long enough for you to win the game. And with Diaz out, really only two offensive options on the floor for Fraca. In Jorginho and Mariano. And that's really all we've seen. And the thing, about Diaz, the, floor. the thing about Diaz being out is that there's 4.45 remaining in this third quarter, yeah. right? There's a ton of time left in this game to play. Oh, yeah. So you don't want to bring him back too early. Nope. I mean, because you bring him back too early, piss up that fifth, and that's it. And you see how the offense is struggling without him right now. Mm -hmm. You don't want to have to go through an entire quarter with that problem. So, you know, it, it is a tough, tough decision for Coach Rubens right now. He's going to have to ask someone to step up. My choice would be Lucas Mariano. He's, he's, he stepped up in a semifinal game when Diaz was with foul trouble, kind of got them over the hump, and then Diaz came and closed the show. That's why this team is so tough. That's why this team scores close to 95 points per game because they do have other options to kind of step up in these scenarios. But this is exactly what you want from Flamingo. You can't take on both of them. You eliminated the one. Play your basketball game now. So let's see what the adjudication of this is going to be. Take a look at Marcio Santos, who came in after the foul. So we've got an unsportsmanlike. On Galvanini, and then we have an unsportsmanlike on Santiago Scala. I saw one four. And if it is 1 4, it's Jorginho, but he was the one that was fouled. And even though it's an sportsman like on both ends, Craig, that review took some time. And you can feel a little bit of air being let out of this arena as yeah. the crowd kind of just had to sit on their hands. Now they're still going to be loud, no question about it. About 7,500 screaming fans here, but it just takes a little bit out of momentum, out of their juice, really. And they. they Flamingo could use this to their advantage. You know, they also got the breather. You mentioned in the first game how humid it is in the gym and how often you see players going to the bench and using the towel. That was almost like a timeout that you didn't really have to use. So I think the advantage here, Flamingo, considering the circumstances. 
So Jorginho to the free throw line. He misses the first. Jorginho, a 77% free throw shooter in BCLA play. He was two of two from the stripe last night. He's two of four in this one now. As the lead is back to nine, 56 47. Coming up on four and a half minutes to play in this third quarter. Shot clock at five. Get it down to Hetchemeyer. He turns around for the easy lay in on the mismatch. Scala out to Mariano. He drives. The pass outside, a little travel. travel. Yeah. Great scramble defense that time by Flamengo. You saw Hachemeyer attack right out to the perimeter. We've talked about how he is very reluctant getting out there that time, making the effort, and it paid off. Turnover comes at the right time. And again, that offense feels like it's in neutral with Diaz on the bench. Deodato keeps it. After he tried to get it to Vildosa. Flamengo turns it over. 340 to play, third quarter. Scala from way outside, and that is good. It's poor defense by Monero. Came out with his hands down. He paid the price. Well, I don't think he expected him to shoot it from 27 feet, <laughs> but he sure did and drained it. Lead back to 10. Scala again. Heat check. Yes! Santiago Scala. Back-to-back -back long three-pointers. And he gives Franca a 13-point lead at 62-49. Helio Rubens wanted somebody to step up, and Santiago Scala says, it'll be me. 42% from beyond the arc in BCLA play. He hits back-to-back -back threes here to push the lead back to 13 points. Look at that first three pointer from Scala, and then the second one. My goodness. And look who was the first one off the bench to congratulate him, Luca Diaz, who we have not seen since the 7.26 mark of this third quarter because of foul trouble. Santiago Scala says, no problem, brother. You just sit down. I got this. Three minutes to play. Third quarter. Deodato for three. Splash that one. I just went after Rafa Monero for poor defense, guarding with his hands down, knowing that there is a potential three-point shooter that you're in front of. Santos did the exact same thing, and Deodato made him pay the price. Over to Gorgeous find underneath, but a good recovery by Hetchemeyer forces the miss. Jose Vildosa the rebound. Deodato now with 17 points. Galvanini for three. That's good! Hand down, man down once again. Mariano dropped his hands right into his pockets. It was too late trying to close out Gavanini. The lead is down to seven. Alongside Carlin Gay, I'm Craig Feda, and this one is a wild one. Pass tipped, stolen away. 
Here Slow comes down. Flamengo again. Dosa. The half court offense set up. Hetchemeyer for three. Missed left. And now Franca. The attack, no. Scala went into a trio of Flamengo defenders. The ill-advised take there. Bill Dosa, the floater from 15. Yes! Boy, I thought they could have called Luca Mariano for that foul. But Vildosa, the tough floater from 50. Usually don't see a floater, a teardrop from 15 feet. But with Luca Mariano closing, he hits it. And the lead is down to five now. My goodness, what a tremendous game. Flamenco clawing back. And Franca calls timeout as they are reeling right now. another look at that gorgeous 15-foot floater with the left hand and after the replay I think they could very well have gotten Luca Mariano for that foul minute and a half to play third quarter Flamengo has cut it to five hook by Mariano no good out of bounds it's going to be Flamengo ball Don't forget, Flamengo trailed by as many as 17 in the second quarter. They are to within five. Deodato finding Galvanini. Kick oh out. My. Oh, they tried to get it back to Vildosa. Galvanini tried the touch pass for the open three-pointer to Vildosa, and it was just off the mark. Now, the pass was terrible, but Vildosa wasn't ready for the ball to come his way regardless. If that pass had been right on the money, it might have hit him in the face because he <laughs> had his hands down and he wasn't prepared to take a wide-open three. Inside of a minute, Scala, another three-pointer, no good. Rebound ripped down by Hetchemeyer. 45 seconds to play. Tried to hit the cutter and stolen away by Scala. And Scala gets whistled for the foul. It'll be his third. Marcio Santos on the floor for Franca with four fouls. He's going to be a guy that's just got to eat minutes with Luca Diaz on the bench. Lucas Mariano is playing a very dangerous game right now. There's a couple of times where the ball handler looked like he was going to get past him and he kind of shot out that hip. And I know that's just instinct. When you're playing defense, you can't move your feet fast enough. You just want to get something in front of the ball handler. And normally it's that hip. And a couple of possessions now, including the floater, where he's kind of hip-checked a guy and the whistle hasn't blown. That would have been his fourth foul, or it will be his fourth foul the next time he's called for one. So, again, we're not even in the fourth yet. Diaz on the bench. You don't want Mariano picking up his fourth as well. Because the offense is struggling with just one of your two-headed monsters out. But if both are out, it could be real trouble. Free throw is good. I'm looking at the statue here, and I see Mariano with only one personal foul. I see Marcio Santos with four. Jorginho has two. Santiago Scala has three. Must have taken away a couple from Mariano and added them to someone else. He's been whistled for more than one personal foul tonight. 
Mariano for three. Front end of the rim, no. Oh, oh and the prayer put back by Santos. He cleared out the defender with his hip and put it up. So it's 64-58 now. Shot clock at six. Deodato, the long three-pointer. No good. He's put another defender on skates. The putback is good. Boy, that is two guys he's made touch earth tonight. Honestly, Santos is lucky he's able to get up and walk off on his own power because that looked like a potential groin injury there. 64-60 after three quarters. Franca leading Flamengo. But Flamengo, after trailing by 17 points in the second quarter, trailed by as many as 13 in the third, they have cut it down to four. We are back with fourth quarter action live from Ginacio Pedro Cao in Franca, Brazil. In the 2023 Basketball Champions League Americas final. In just one moment. One quarter to play in Franca for all the marbles. Franca leading Flamengo 64-60. Championship game of the 2023 BCLA tournament. Alongside Carlin Gay, my name's Craig Feta. Flamengo outscored Franca 22-15 in that third quarter. They closed out the quarter on an 11-2 run. Get to within four. They trailed by as many as 17 in the first half. Tried to get it to Hetchemeyer out of bounds. It'll stay with Flamengo on the initial signal. Coach Rebens was initially asking for a review. I don't know if you use it in a game this close at this time. Yeah, not right now, I don't think. Over an out of bounds call, so we'll see. Yeah, they are going to review it. Listen, I'm not going to sit here and say that I have more knowledge than a world-class head coach, but I would not use a challenge in this situation, at this juncture, in this type of game over one out-of-bounds call. I think I agree with you, partner. Of course, if it goes their way, then he's the genius. <laughs> and we're wearing the dunce caps, but regardless of the outcome, yeah, I, I, I think I agree with you. Yeah, it's too early. Even if you do gain possession, it's yeah. first possession of the fourth quarter. What I, if this was 30 seconds left and now you're stuck with your hands in the air hoping that you had a challenge to use? I'm in your boat, pal. I know what you're saying. While we have a moment, let's look at some of the numbers on this one. Martin Cuello, 15 points for Flamengo. Guy Deodato, 17. Gabriel Galvanini has 10. 
Raphael Hetzemeyer, eight. Franca, Jorginho de Paula, 11 points. Luca Mariano, 11. Luca Diaz, 14, but he has been on the bench since the 726 mark of the third quarter with four fouls. Santiago Scala has 11 on back to back three pointers in that third quarter. And they do overturn the call. Just underway fourth quarter. If you are just joining us, Franca ran out to a huge 17-point lead in the first half. Closed out the first half up 11. Built it back up to 13 in that third quarter before Flamengo cut it to four at the end of the third. It's now back to six thanks to that bucket by David Jackson. He's got six. Vildosa misses wide right, but there for the putback. Galvanini misses. And Santos pulls the rebound down. Stolen by Deodato. Galvanini saying, okay, let's, let's slow it up. Give it back to him. Attack Santos. He has four fouls. Hetschemeyer. Now Vildosa in the lane. A little pass out to Galvanini. He does attack Santos. Left hand hook is good. Guy Deodato has six steals in this game. Flamengo bench wanted a charge on Santos. That foul, though, I believe is going to be on Galvanini. That was a good no call by the yeah. officials. Yep, sure was. You could test by Galvanini on the initial drive by Santos. Just because he hit the deck hard didn't mean that both bodies were, you know, in, in a rightful spot there. I thought there shouldn't have been a foul called, but then moving around and finding Mariano's body, just a little too aggressive, kind of shifting underneath him as he tried to attempt that layup. Mariano hits the first free throw. He's got 12 now. Galvanini, that was his fourth foul. That's not as big for Flamengo as four on Diaz for Franca because Flamengo can come off the bench with Andres Ibarguen, Rafa Munejo. Even Luca Martinez at 6'6 has some size to him. but none of them as athletic as Galvanini. Here's Deodato. He for three. Oh wow. my goodness, Deodato hits again! The initial jab step was nasty. Had his defender falling all over himself. Santos tried to come out and contest the three. Didn't matter. Santos goes down, draws the foul. That time, I thought Santos did a better job of rolling and angling his body just like that to make sure he got the contact and got the shot off and drew the foul. And you saw him throwing his hands in the air. That's saying language for finally. <laughs> that was on Vildosa. And he saying the same thing that everybody says. I was straight up, man. <laughs> Third foul on Vildoza. Santos, a 73% free throw shooter, gets the first.
Both free throws good by Santos. And the lead is five. Seven twenty-eight. 27 26. We have officially seen Luca Diaz out of the game for 10 game minutes. It seemed like an eternity, especially if you are a Franca fan. When will we see him come back in? If Franca keeps this lead, we may not see him till about the three or four minute mark. Oh, no, you got to get him in earlier than that. Wow! Huge shot there by Jorginho. back to eight I mean if you can maintain a five to eight point bubble why put him in that three pointer short Deodato the rebound Cuello for three that's short Deodato almost had himself another rebound Give inside off the glass, up and good. Michael Smith score. Beg your pardon, that was Santos again. And I saw a zero. And now Santos has the fans back into it. He's got eight points, and the lead is back to 10 75 65. Gustavo Conti wants timeout. Let's see if we can listen in. Step back three pointer by Jorginho de Paula, along with the bucket by Marcio Santos. Gets the lead back to 10 points at 75 65 after Flamengo drew to within three after the Guide Odato three pointer that made it 68 65. Diaz is still sitting on the bench. I think about yep. bringing him back in now. And then trust him. Trust your best player to close the show. He did it in the semifinals. You can trust him to finish this one off and carry you to a championship. Galvanini, there's a double kick out. Three on the way from Vildosa. No. Saved inbound. Saved to Quayle. Here's the drive by Galvanini. And a blocking Ooh. foul. Ooh, I thought he was going to load up to call the charge there. He was in the restrictive area. And Santos thinks it's a charge yeah, because he, he said he saw the same thing that you did. Look at his feet yep. right there in the restricted area. By the way, that shot, that three-point shot before the drive there, I thought they got it off late. I heard the shot clock I, go off. You know, I thought the same thing. And it was play on. It's so loud in the gym uh -huh. that the officials might have missed it. And that's going to be the fifth foul on Marcio Santos. First free throw misses wide right. It's a bad miss. Yeah, some atrocious free throw shooting by Flamengo tonight. 12 of 23. Oh, wow. Boy. boy, he almost cinder blocked that one. Alvanini misses them both badly. Coming up on five and a half minutes. Jorginho, kick out to Mariano. Long three, no. 
Well, I thought that was five fouls on Santos. He's still in there. Three. No. Short on that one for Galvanini. And you see coaching staff for Franca telling David Jackson to slow it down. He breaks an ankle. Hits from the right elbow, and the lead is 12. Whatever Coach Conti thinks is his best lineup, they need to be on the floor right now. And Deodato needs to be touching the ball almost every time down the court. He's been their best offensive player tonight. Hetchemeyer on the block, working on Santos. Backs him down. Off the glass and in. That's too easy. They'll take that every trip up the floor. I think the next dead ball, I think you may be right that it's time to bring Diaz in. Imagine the eruption from the crowd when he comes back in. And there he is. He's sitting on the by the scorer's table. Deodato's got to go into attack mode now. Shoots it up over Mariano. Short. Ball's out of bounds. Goes off of Galvanini, and that's going to be Franca ball. And let's listen to the crowd as Diaz comes back in. Look at Helio Rubens talking to Jorginho. And a good look at Gustavo Conti. like the ice capades there for a moment <laughs> sliding Coach Conti pulling out every trick in the book to try and delay as long as he can to give his team a breather. You see Guy Diodato right there in front of him, breathing heavily. This is Coach Conti not using a timeout here in this situation. He doesn't have many to use right now. Trying to get extra seconds to give his team a rest here with just over four to play. And they're down 10. And now he's shouting out instructions, or actually his assistant, coaches shouting out instructions this is just veteran coaching <laughs> by coach Conti Conti assisted by Fernando de Oliveira Herrera inside four minutes now shot clock at nine here's Jorginho that's a foul oh my goodness I mean the minute he put the basketball down it was a bear hug Fourth team foul on Flamengo. Franca has just one team foul in this fourth quarter. Third foul on Vildosa. Fade away by Jackson. No. Rebound grabbed by Vildosa. The lead is 10. Vildosa into the front court. He gets hammered. Foul on Jackson. Have to believe the lineup that's on the floor right now for both teams is what's going to close it. A lot of tired bodies here in this fourth. Deodato on the drive gets past Diaz. Did the right yeah. thing there. Diaz <laughs> does not want to foul. Deodato now 22 points. Jorginho, he launches the three, that missed, up over the basket support, no. Rebound, Vildosa. 
Got to give number one in white a touch. And that foul is going to be on Jackson. Actually, that was Cuello that had the rebound that got it to Vildosa. And then Cuello draws the foul on Jackson at the other end. So three team fouls now on Franca. They picked up a couple here in a hurry. That's the third on Jackson. Eldado. Picked up by Jackson. Cuello has to come and screen as he's being guarded by Diaz. Eldado launches the three, missing Mariano the rebound. You know that Diaz has the, the four fouls. He doesn't want to pick up the fifth. If, you, if he's guarding you, you got to go and screen the basketball and get that switch. Jackson backs it out. Shot clock at eight. Mariano guarded by Galvanini. Step back three. Oh, oh my. Lead back to 11. Mariano, the three-pointer, gives him 15. And Gustavo Conti wants timeout before it gets too far away. The lead has ballooned to 11 after they got it to within three early on in the fourth quarter. Let's listen to Gustavo Conti. Just over two and a half minutes to play in the fourth quarter. Franca leading by 11. Flamengo had cut the lead to just three on a three-pointer by Guy Deodato, but this fadeaway three-pointer by Luca Mariano, nothing but that fringe. Does Flamengo have one more run? Into the corner for three. No. Jackson the rebound. That missed everything. Jorginho. The shot might have been blocked. Here comes Deodato the other way. He on the attack. Kicks it out. Three on the way. No. Rebound Vildosa. Out of bounds. They're going to say it stays with Flamengo. Flamengo settling for a lot of threes here. There's still plenty of time in this game to chip away. There's been a couple of opportunities to drive in the lane and either go to your float game or the lay. They're not taking it. They're kicking it out for three. It feels like they think that they need to have a three every time down the court. It's not the case. Take your time, run your offense, and honestly, the simple offense is try to get a switch so that Diaz is guarding you and then go to work. Three, and that is good. Oh, my goodness. Luca Martinez comes in off the bench cold and drains a big three-pointer. The 32-year-old Mexican gets Flamengo back to within 11. I think you're part nine. Yes. Started by Cuello. And now another three-pointer. That is good! David Jackson strikes from just about the same place that Lucas Mariano hit the three-pointer from. And the lead is back to 12. That three is good. Oh, my goodness. It's down to nine after the three by Cuello. He's got 18. Into the corner for Deodato for three. Yes! Guy Deodato scores again from three-point range. And the lead is just six with 104 to play. (laughs) 
Just a few moments ago, it looked like Flamengo might be dead in the water. They were down by 12, and just like that, three pointers by Cuello and Deodato has it down to within six. Deodato now with 22 points, four rebounds, six steals. What an incredible game for the veteran. I don't know about you, partner, but this is one of the more exciting basketball games I've ever seen. Yesterday it was raining so hard <laughs> that the ceiling was leaking. Now it's raining threes here in the final moments of the final four. See if Flamingo can keep up the defensive intensity and put more pressure on the home team. Santiago Scala into the front court. Deodato hounding it. Now Deodato picks up Jorginho. Shot clock at 10. 48 seconds to play. Shot clock at 5. Jorginho, the drive. Off the glass and in. Lead back to eight. Here's Galvanini. Just about loses it. Shot clock at 10. 15 footer is up and good. Luca Martinez scores. Lead is six with 24.5 to play. A couple of big buckets. Ice cold off the bench for Luca Martinez. Twenty-four and a half seconds to play. Dare I say, in regulation. Santiago Scala to the free throw line. A ninety-four percent free throw shooter in BCLA play. Sixteen of seventeen. He's two of two from the line tonight. Even if he hits both free throws, it's still a two-possession game. And he drains the first. Second one is good as well. The lead is back to eight. Beg your pardon, it's three-possession game now. That's going to do it for Flamengo. The miss from the corner, the rebound by Diaz with 11.1 to play, and the fans and the coaches for Franca starting the celebration here in Ginacio Perujao in Franca. Yes, misses the free throw, but I don't think it'll be of any consequence. Second one is good. Ten seconds to play. Three on the way from Galvanini, no good. Ball goes out of bounds with less than a second to play, and it's all over but the inbound pass. Fellas, there's still seven tenths of a second to play. There we go. And with an 87-79 victory over Flamengo, Franca 
wins the 2023 Basketball Champions League America gold medal in their home arena. The celebration is on. Teams congratulating each other. Just a Herculean effort by Flamengo. Coming back from 17 down. And then coming back from a dozen down in the fourth to cut it to within six points. But they could get no closer as Franca able to close out. Just a tremendous game. Unbelievable effort by both sides. Think about guys like Guy Deodato. And Jorginho De Paula. Luca Mariano. These guys just played their absolute living guts out. And gave us one entertaining game. I sure did. And you see the emotion for the winners. Able to do it in front of their home fans. This is known as the basketball capital of this country. We know Brazil loves their football. But this region is hoops crazy. And they appreciate not only hosting this event but winning it and there's about 7,500 people sitting in the crowd right now that have made memories that will last a lifetime the party's just starting Craig it is absolutely <laughs> just starting here in Franca and you mentioned Guy Diodato on the other side and the way that he played this evening battling for Flamingo Obviously, the points, 25 points. Defensively, he was incredible with six steals. He actually ties the BCL of America's record for steals in a game that was set by Alex Franklin of Real Esteli a year ago. And just shows you he left it all out on the floor. Just not enough. To knock off the team that really was the best team from the start to the end of this competition. That two-headed monster, Luca Mariano and Luca Diaz. They played for Brazil at home at the America Cup back in the fall and fell to Argentina. And you could tell in that moment it was tough for them to not bring a championship back home representing their country. They're able to get it this time around and they leave here with no regrets. 46 straight wins as a franchise for Franca between league play, tournament play, BCLA, but none bigger than this one as they finally hoist the big trophy. Let's take a look at some of the final numbers on this one. For Flamengo, 28 of 73 from the field overall. 38.4%. They were 11 of 42 from three-point range, 26.2. They were 12 of 23 from the free throw line, 52%. Martin Cuello, 18 points, four rebounds. Lucas. And let's listen to the interview Lucas. with Luca Mariano. Conseguimos aí manter o equilíbrio do jogo. Cara, a gente conseguiu 
o título que foi que eu não tinha. Eu não sei o que dizer, né? eu só estou muito feliz, eu só tenho que agradecer a Deus. É só isso. Se você olhar ali em cima na placa, Franca foi duas vezes vice-campeão mundial. Vocês têm a chance agora de conquistar mais um título inédito para Franca. Como é que é o foco para o restante da temporada? Cara, eu não sei se a gente vai conseguir ou não, mas a gente está no Mundial e a gente vai dar o nosso máximo aí para conseguir mais um, um título histórico para a cidade. É isso aí, eu estou só feliz, cara. Não tem nem o que dizer. Vai festejar, Lucas. Obrigado, cara. E MVP, Luca Mariano. So again, look at the numbers. Martin Cuello, 18 points. Guy Deodato, 25 points on 9 of 17, shooting 5 of 12 from beyond the arc. He had 4 rebounds, 6 steals. Gabriel Galvanini, 12 points. Luca Martinez, 4. Jose Bildosa, 2. Nicolas Aguirre did not play in the second half. Elio, parabéns pela conquista. As we look Tava at Elio Rubens. Mariano. Tem uma plaquinha ali em cima. Franca, so duas vezes vice-campeão mundial. E agora você que tem toda uma história na cidade, seu pai, sua família, conquista esse título que te dá a chance de fazer história de novo e conquistar algo que Franca ainda não tem nessa história tão vitoriosa do clube. O que, é que você pode falar num dia tão especial? Thierry, bom, primeiro eu queria agradecer a nossa diretoria, ao nosso conselho, ao nosso patrocinador Márcio Magalu, ao nosso parceiro SESI, por acreditarem no processo, no projeto. Ah, quando a gente começou esse trabalho, eu dei uma carona para a Luiz Helena, que é presidente do Conselho de Magalu, e ela falou, até hoje nós vivemos pela paixão, agora nós vamos ter paixão, mas vamos ter melhor gestão. E nós, vamos, nós precisamos tentar conquistar, ser o melhor time de basquete do mundo. E de repente a gente ganha, já somos os melhores times das Américas, e vamos disputar o Mundial em Singapura. Então, assim... É fruto de muito trabalho, de muita gente. Eu falo sempre que o sucesso é multifatorial, são vários fatores, mas é inacreditável o que esses jogadores, que a nossa comissão técnica trabalha de noite, discute, briga, vibra, a, almoça junto, curte o dia a dia para chegar onde nós chegamos. Então é, estou muito feliz, agora comemorar e partir em Singapura. Parabéns, Elinho, vai comemorar, cara. Victorious coach Elio Rubens. As we continue to run down the numbers. Rafael Hetchemeyer, 10.6 rebounds. Andres Ibarguen, 2.5 boards. And Rafa Mineiro, 4 points to round out Flamengo. For Franca, 32 of 58 overall from the floor, 55%. 10.21 from beyond the arc, 47.6%. Jorginho had 16 points, four rebounds, five assists. Luca Diaz, 15 points, seven rebounds. Spent much of the second half on the bench in foul trouble. Jonathan Dos Santos, three points. David Jackson, 11 and six rebounds. Santiago Scala, 13 points. Came up big in the second half for Franca. Luca Mariano, the MVP, had 16 points, seven rebounds. Marcio Santos, eight big points in the second half, seven rebounds. And Michael Smith added six for Franca. Franca out-rebounded Flamengo, 41-37. 15 turnovers for Franca. Just seven for Flamengo. Once again, Franca 2023 BCL America's champion Carlin Gay final thoughts fourth year fourth edition I should say of this event and it's incredible to see its growth as we see Luca Mariano accepting his MVP trophy you just see these gyms packed out in the each year that goes by, Craig, it, it gets bigger and better. We saw the addition of the tunnels, smoke. I mean, that stuff is cosmetic, but it really does make it feel like a world class event, which it is. And it's great to see teams coming and competing and you see what it means to win this event now in its fourth year. How emotional Coach Ruben was 
how emotional Lucas Diaz was as soon as the buzzer sounded. He immediately went to his family for a long embrace as if this you know event had been going on for 50 years and he'd been climbing this mountain for so long. It's incredible to see what this event is starting to mean now in the Americas and how the players are really taking to it from every level. And you know, credit to the FIBA staff behind the scenes working their butt off to elevate this event and make sure that the athletes get treated the way that they should when they arrive at, the, at these events. It's always top-notch. It's always first-class treatment. But then also the product on the floor is now demanding it as well as we see some of the all-stars getting announced here for the tournament. Some boost from the crowd. There's still some intensity, <laughs> even though the buzzer has sounded. But when you look at Franca here, being able to host this in their city, being able to put on the show for their fans, coming out on top with a win. You talk about the history of this team. Sao Paulo State Championships, they have 15 of them. That's a record. National Championships, Brazilian Championships, they have 12 of them. That's the record. You mentioned the win streak. That's a part of that. They're currently the reigning and defending champions in the Brazilian National League. And now they can add to the trophy case with this victory here tonight and move on to try and win a world championship at the FIBA Intercontinental Cup. And this is a very good team. We've seen that no matter what, they have a lot of weapons up and down the roster, three of them there in the All-Star team, the All-Star 5 for the BCLA uh, Final Four weekend, Mariano Diaz and Jorginho. Those three represented the national team at the America. They played well together. They actually played under Coach Conti, who they just beat, so he knows them very well. But that's a three-headed monster. We were calling it a two-headed monster, but we should start calling it a three-headed monster. Yeah, they sprouted because the you third add, one. Yeah, you add Jorginho into that mix. This is a team that is going to challenge at a high level whoever comes out of the G League, whoever comes out of the BCL uh, in Europe, whoever comes out of uh, the, the BLA in, uh, in Africa. And they're going to be tough to beat because it's not just one person on this squad that can beat you. We saw Lucas Diaz in back-to-back -back games getting foul trouble. Didn't matter. They're still hoisting the championship in large part to the guy who's about to get the MVP trophy, Lucas Mariano. But he's been terrific in up and down the roster. You go down to Jackson as well, and the coaching from Coach Rubens, this is going to be a tough team, and it wouldn't, it wouldn't shock me if they go over and win the world championship in September. That's a great picture right there. And the individual awards, they're going to do the team presentations in just a moment. It's time for us to wrap up. Again, the final score, 88-79 in favor of Franca, defeating Flamengo in the championship game. Earlier on, Minas defeated Kimsa for third place, their third consecutive third place finish in BCLA play. But after an exciting game, Franca will hoist the big trophy in just a matter of moments. As we look at FIBA America's president, Carol Callen. For my partner, Carlin Gay, and everybody at FIBA, we would like to thank you so much for watching. My name's Craig Feda. Hope you enjoyed this Final Four live from Ignacio Pedro Cao in Franca, Brazil. It's been a spectacular league season. It's been a spectacular Final Four. And it ends with a fantastic final game. Again, Franca, the 2023 BCL Americas champions. So long, everybody. Thanks for watching.